Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is part three in the Lua Basics tutorial series. Uh, today we'll be covering triggers and if statements. If you haven't already, I recommend checking out part two or even part one if you haven't been following along from the start. And I'll put a link in the description for both of those just down below. And if you haven't already, you can also see me streaming on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday where I stream core development, answer questions for you or any new topics that you'd like me to cover in my YouTube channel. Once you've opened up the Collectathon project, let's go to core content and we're going to scroll down to gameplay objects and select the trigger. So we'll drag that into the hierarchy. Uh, you'll see it on the screen as it appears in the center at 000. zero, zero. Uh, if you cannot see it, just press V and that will just toggle the gizmos on and off. We then want to add a 3D model uh, to do that. So we'll drag that up and we'll just turn the spawn point off for now. So not this visible eye button, just click that and it will disappear for us. We can then come back to the trigger, just move that up a bit more. And what we want to do is get a 3D object. In this case, I'm not too fast, so I'm just going to use a ball. So click and drag that into the scene. Just try and center it a little bit and then go to the hierarchy and pull the ball into the ball, the ball into the trigger. Once it's in the trigger, let's make sure we've selected the ball, go to its properties and position. We just want to go zero tab, zero tab, zero. So that's centered in the middle of the trigger. We then want to go ahead and call the trigger what the pickup will be. So in this case, we'll just call it item pickup. One last thing we want to do in the hierarchy is go to ball, go to properties, and we just want to turn the collision off. So force off. So that way the player won't actually collide with the ball. They will only collide with the trigger. The one last thing we want to do within the hierarchy is also just tidy up what we call the group. Uh, so what we're going to do here is click on the ball, right click, go new group containing this, and we're just going to call it geometry. And we actually don't want the geometry to be uh, a collision object so the player can't hit it. So instead, make sure we're on the geometry still, go down to collision and force off. So that means everything within this group, so in this case ball, will inherit its parent um, collision declaration. So in this case, it is force off. So inherit from parent, force off. We also want to add a folder or a group called scripts. So let's do that. We'll right click the item pickup, new group. So that way it will place it within the item pickup and just call it scripts. And one last thing we want to do is put the item pickup into a client context folder. So let's click that, right click, create new context, new client context containing this. And we're going to call it item pickup. And because we've got the same name for the trigger, let's just change the trigger name back to trigger. Now let's get to the coding. So let's go to create new script and we're just going to call it pickup item. And click create script. Let's, it will open it up for us. Let's select that and drag that into the scripts folder of the item pickup. And let's open that script up and let's edit. As this script is going to be talking to a trigger, there's a few things that we need to take into consideration. And that is who can collide with the trigger? What functionality does the trigger do? And we need to make sure that we actually check that the trigger is being called. Uh, so to do that, we need to reference a trigger. In this case, we want to reference the trigger in the item pickup. So let's actually minimize this. And as we did in previous videos, let's add a custom property for object reference. And then we're just going to call it trigger and add property. Now let's click and drag the trigger into the missing object. From there, we just copy the line of code. And we're going to paste that into the pickup item script. And as always, let's just tidy that up. Now that we have reference to the trigger, let's create a function. We're just going to call it print to screen just for now. We'll go ends. And what we'll type in is print and test and save that. Currently, this script won't actually run anything because we're not calling the trigger to do anything if something collides with it. 
Uh, so to do that, we actually want to go trigger dot begin overlap event. And then we want to connect. And once something is connected, we want to call the print to screen function. Let's discuss what this line of code is actually saying. The trigger variable, which we named up here, is referencing the trigger, which is a trigger object. As soon as something with a collision also collides with the trigger, it's going to print to screen. So begin overlap event means something has just entered the trigger. So let's just save this. We'll place it down to the bottom and we'll press play. If we go to event log. Oh, it's not working. I wonder where that is. So the trigger itself, if we go into the hierarchy, its collision is inheriting from the parent. So in this case, the item pickup, it's actually force off. So we don't want that because that means the trigger is inheriting the item pickup. So what we actually want to do is override that by going force on. We'll save the game again, press play. And as you can see in the bottom left of the event log, test has appeared. That means we have collided. Let's just test that one more time. Move that forward, press play. Bottom left, no test walk in test and that's just going to continue doing it forever as long as that trigger is still allowed to collide so let's escape out of that so we'll head back to the script and we'll edit it which is down here anyway and what we need to do is two things we need to turn the visibility off and also turn the triggers collider off so we don't want to see the ball once the player has collided with the trigger uh, we need reference to one other thing, so let's do that right now. Let's go to add custom property, core object reference, and what we want to actually reference is the item pickup itself. So in this case, the item pickup, which is the senior, the, pa the parent of everything else. Once the custom property is set up, we drag the item pickup into, hang on, I am incorrect. Let's get rid of item pickup. And let's call it geometry instead. So core reference, geometry. And add property, correct. So instead let's drag the geometry folder into the missing object. So we can reference the actual model. Once that's done, let's copy that line of code like we usually do, paste it in here, and we'll just rename this variable to geometry. Now that we have reference to the trigger and geometry, so trigger, in this case, we need to turn off because we don't want players to continually earn coin from the same uh, trigger. So in this case, let's type trigger dot collision. We're just going to turn the collision off it equals collision with a capital C dot force underscore off. Let's save that and we'll test it. Make sure the event log is showing. Test. As you can see, no more test is showing up. Therefore the collision is off. Let's go back to the script. And for the geometry, we actually want to turn the visibility off. So we go geometry dot visibility equals visibility capital V dot force off. Just fix that V up. Save that, press play, and voila. Now that we have a basic understanding of how triggers work, let's explore what if statements are. Now in this scenario, what we're going to do is add a score every time the player collides with the trigger. So we'll just incrementally go up by one, and then once they've hit 10, they will win. And it'll print on the event log, player has won. So to do this, what we're going to do is create a new function. We're going to call it add score. Make sure we end that function. And within this, we need to add a score every time the player collides with the trigger. So to do that, we also need a variable called score. So we'll go local score and we'll just equal that, equal that zero. So it starts at nothing. But every time the trigger or whenever the player collides with the trigger, we want to add one to that score. So to do that, we just go score equals score itself plus one. And then we'll just 
print score. So it prints the score to the event log. So let's just test that out. It's still printing tests. And I know why. It's because we didn't change the trigger.begin overlap event connect. So let's change that right now. So add score, click add score there, save event log and press play. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We can do that forever and it will just continually add up. However, what's the point of having a score if there's no winner? So that's where if statements come into play. So looking at the function add score, score equals score plus one. But we only want that to happen if the player is still playing. Um, so instead what we do is if score equals 10, then we print player one. And then we end that. All right, now let's explore what this if statement is actually asking. Within the function add score, it asks if score equals 10, that should be two equals because we're checking to see if it actually equals 10, then print player one, and then we'll end the if statement. Um, and then once the if statement has been checked, it will just go score equals score plus one and then print score for us once again. So if we save that, click event log, press play. We get one all the way to 10, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then 11. So it's actually gone above. The player has actually collected 11, not 10. There's a reason for this. Let's explore that. So we go back to the script. So in this case, the score is being checked before adding the score, but we actually want it to check if the player has won after collecting the last item. So instead, let's copy that, paste it under here, and remove that if statement up there. Let's save that again. Press play. Actually, before we do that, let's just drop it down to three. Save that, press play. So one, two, three. We exit that and check the event log. One, two, player one, and then it's printing three. We get rid of that. We just know the player has one. So there's other things we can do with if statements as well. There's a thing called else if. So else if still requires something to check. So let's go score equals two. Then let's print almost there. Almost there. And then we'll end that. So in this case, it's running if score equals three, then we can print this. Else if score equals two, then print this. So we'll save that. Open the event log, press play. The one, almost there, three, player one. Awesome. Let's escape that and we'll go back to the script. And one last thing before we end the video is a thing called else. So is if all else fails in these if and else ifs, we just want it to go, uh, we just want it to print. No requirements met. In this case, no if statements met. And then we put the end at the end there. Save that, press play. And if we stop there after moving through one, no requirements met. And that takes us to the end of part three. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it very helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please put them in the um, comments below and I'll be sure to read them. And yeah, look forward to seeing you in part four where we learn to communicate scripts with other scripts. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, See you then.